Welcome back to the Stadium of Light. Sunderland have came through today's fixture by two goals to one against Birmingham City. And it was a bit of magic, a bit of quality, which was the difference this afternoon. This time from Ahmad, as it was in the previous fixture, same scoreline as well. Yeah, yeah they won't enjoy seeing him too often, will they, Birmingham? But no, it was that little bit of difference, that sparkle of magic, as we said. And we know he's capable of it. He's shown it a few times this season, hasn't he? Um, and it, listen, at times the game, it wasn't great. It was a bit scrappy. Um, they made it difficult for us to play through them and we had to really you know, graft and, and earn the win. Absolutely. Let's have a look through the highlights and from today's fixture, 2-1 win on International Fans Day and we'll be touching upon that in the uh, hashtag Ask Danny section of the post-game programme. Uh, Patrick Roberts had to make way at the end because of the late sending off of Dennis Serkin. We'll come on to that. But he, Patrick was good all afternoon, wasn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, he was, was bright at times when, when the game was had a bit of pace about so that's when Patrick comes alive you see he drops into the pockets he gets on the ball he's, he's always busy and he's bright should Prichard have done a bit better from that one though let's have a look is this the one yeah he just drags it doesn't he you can see what it just opens up slightly for him you know what he's looking for just to try and fire it into that far corner but he, he drags the shot wide doesn't he and you know the angle it's a, it's a tight angle isn't it you see Ruddy he's got it covered um, but yeah just thought early on in that first five minutes or so maybe ten minutes we, we were bright we were at it especially down this right-hand side. Jack didn't see a lot of the ball in the first half, down the left. Um, but I thought, you know what, we're going to get an early goal here, we'll settle in and we'll, we'll get our passing game going. But it wasn't to be, and the game just had a, a dip for, for 15, 20 minutes there where yeah. not a lot happened, did it? The, the crowd were quiet, it went flat in the ground, and then all of a sudden... What was that down to, though? Because Sunderland were able to just easily keep possession. Yeah. Birmingham were quite happy for us to have it as well, weren't they? Was it down to yeah, that? Yeah, they've, they've set up there well, almost a 4-4-2, really. Um, allowing Danny Bart and Trey Hume to have the ball and, and to try and work it but we found it difficult to play through them you know we were going out wide and they set up really well um, and, we, and we struggled in a way we sort of lost our way for 10-15 for minutes in that first half and then they come into it I say as I thought Ahmad was our best player perhaps and then Chong for them um, you know similar in a way where they're both all left foot Cutting like in. to play out on that right yeah. hand side uh, both been at Man United any more similarities throw them in <laughs> Uh, but no, he was bright and then he was the difference in that first off there. Good composure from him. Uh, I thought, you know, and most people think he's going to shoot there with his right foot, but he chops back and just rolls it across to, to Hall, who, who slides it in. And then they get themselves in front. This was a... Let's have a look Is at it a back. Uh, he, he, it's what he got. He comes flying in. Yeah, he, he picked up a yellow. There was a few oohs from the crowd as he come flying in. Um, you know, borderline, borderline yellow between that and the red. Um, and then towards the end of that first half we did have a good spell didn't we where we had a lot of set plays ball coming in there Dan Neal on his left foot with that one catches it quite well I think we'll see it from behind the goal where see this one now a lot of blue shirts coming out to press him and it's always going away isn't it from that, that right hand side corner as you look at it from behind the goal um, but yeah I just felt there and I said didn't I you know, if, if we can nick one here now just before the break can we get back on the front foot then coming out for the second half and, and we'll see in a moment that we, we managed to go and get that goal uh, I think it comes from this corner, does it? We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, you know, Birmingham difficult. We've seen it a lot of times this season. It's perhaps why our, our away record is better than the home record because when we go away from home, the onus at, at times is on the on the home team to have the ball and to, to come at us with the home crowd being behind them. But it's what you and do it with it us, that counts. But it's what you it? do with it. Yeah, it's, you know, for all the ball we've had today, we're pro I haven't seen the stats yet, but I'm guessing we've had north of 60, 65 percent of possession today. Uh, but haven't done I say I haven't done a lot with it I haven't worked the goalkeeper as much as you would have liked in terms of having the amount of ball at what we did um, but there we go right on half time Trey Hume it's his first goal league goal for the club yeah, yeah we've we done some <laughs> we did a little <laughs> bit more digging. digging he did score in a pre-season friendly against Dundee right uh, but yeah he's, he's you know he's come up with the come up with the goal there right on half time but then, and then come after after the break and I'm saying right can we can we tails are up now can we kick on but Birmingham started quite bright and it was Chong, wasn't it, getting some of the ball on this on this right hand side. That one there from Jukovic, he was he was a yard or two offside anyway, excuse it. Wide of the left hand post. Um but then the game really sort of started to open up for ten minutes where It made for know, a better game that though, didn't it? Yeah, that's what you want to see. And you, you know, you go back to the whole one, uh, was it a week ago now at the Stadium of Life. It wasn't that quite was a, that open. No, but that's what you say, that's what you want to see. You're not always gonna get games like that, but with Hull and Birmingham being in similar positions where they're, they're, they're the wrong end of the table in the way, you know, 16th, 17th, um, coming towards the end of the season, go and play with a little bit of freedom. And I thought Hull did more so than Birmingham today. Birmingham were a little bit more cautious in their shape, you know, set up, I said they kept it compact and narrow and were looking to hit us on the break where they have got pace out wide. Uh, Kadra on that left-hand side, but he was a little bit wasteful and he got on, 
on the ball at times. Um, and then you're thinking now we're having that little bit of a little bit of a spell that one there for Jack. Yeah, a little the, bit tentative uh, with it with the header, wasn't he? A few really of these chances came it. in quick succession, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, and then I'm thinking, right, and when it does become a little bit more open, that's when I, I, I fancy us in games, you know, with the with the players we've got at that top end of the pitch to to go on uh, to go on and, and get us a result. And, th and there's the man there, wasn't it? It's that big switch from Jack. The game was crying out for a few more switches. Look at the distance between Trusty and, and where Ahmad is there. It's 10, 15 yards. You can't give these players that type of space. That's what they want. Just 10 yards to get up ahead of steam, drive you back into the box. And to be fair, they actually double up quite well there. They get across there and it's it's Hannibal who come Hannibal, on. Yeah, he's it's not, yeah but it's, it's not great defending, is it? He just turns his back, doesn't look, doesn't do anything. He's got to put the brakes on there and they should know. Ahmad wants to come back on his left foot, but they don't. And bang, that's the, that's the result, what you're going to get. And there's the sending off for Dennis. What do you um, make of this? Listen, he's blocked him, Dennis. He, he gets square on and he ran him just a, a minute or so before down the touchline. It's quite sharp, actually, Chong, when he knocks it past him. And you see Dennis there gets squared on, doesn't get side on and, and try and match him. And not only does he get sent off, he gets an arm in the face and he's, he's gone off with, well, possibly a broken nose. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I think it'll be a one-game suspension for him. So He might even have missed yeah. Tuesday through the injury. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So then you've got, you know, obviously Luke's come back in today. He might come across left-back or, or Linden, as yeah. he did against Hull. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but, yeah, towards the end of the game there, they, they had a lot of ball, didn't they? But they didn't really I mean, they didn't really do enough with it. You see that one there, almost the game, getting really, yeah. round the far far post. But, no, quiet for Anthony Patterson towards the end of the game. He come, come and claimed a couple, didn't he? Um, so, yeah, and another big three points. Absolutely. Now we are going to have a look at the scores from in and around the championship. This afternoon, Sheffield United got it right that time. Four, <laughs> Cardiff City won. A Blackpool 1-0 win against their fellow strugglers, Wigan. Millwall 2, Preston North End 0. That could mean something for Sunderland around the, uh, the playoff spaces. Queen's Park Rangers 0, Coventry City 3. Reading 0, Burnley 0. Rotherham United nil, Luton Town 2, Stoke City 1, West Brom 2, Swansea City 1, Huddersfield Town nil. Of course, Sunderland's next game is against Huddersfield Town here at the Stadium of Light on Tuesday. Uh, Watford 2, Bristol City nil, And there's a late game, Br uh, Blackburn Rovers, who are doing their best to try and get out of the top <laughs> yeah. six, aren't they? They yeah. do that every season. They're playing Hull, and we know Hull can score goals all too well. What does that do to the league table then, Danny? Let's have a look. Sunderland on ninth. On 61 points. Cardiff City now sit in sixth. Coventry City. Coventry City. <laughs> can't see rightly today. Coventry City sit on 62 points, Danny. Yeah. We are one point outside the playoffs. Yeah, well, there's four or five teams there, aren't they? Having a, having a right go for that sixth place, I'd say. Possibly Millwall as well. They've got a three-point cushion there. But, yeah, you look at that and say results haven't really gone for us as much today. Have the good win for Coventry, by the way. 3-0, wasn't it, I think. And say Blackburn now, a couple of games in hand though. Uh, so for them. what would you, what are you looking for then as a Sunderland fan? Are you saying right, Luton win, let them win? Yeah, are they, yeah. Are they gone? I, th now? I think you they're, forget about you forget playoffs. about Luton and, and forget about Middlesbrough. And Middlesbrough as well. Yeah. yeah. So there's you got you got fifth and sixth place there. Really. Here. Yeah. So there's those teams there, probably all the way down to Norwich. You obviously got a bit of a hide in last night at, at Middlesbrough. Um, yeah. So you've got those teams competing for that place really, haven't you? And then obviously we've got a couple in and around us to play as well. Um, Preston last game of the season if we get down to that to that sort of level um, in terms of we've got to play Watford we've got to play West Brom as well but got to take care of the next game and the Huddersfield's the next one up so yeah Huddersfield been down there all season haven't they yeah, but Warnock's turned it around and that's they've their had a first bit of a, feed under Warnock, yeah I, I was going to say they've had a bit of a rally haven't they and yep. they've had some good results so uh, they'll come up here Probably they'll have a good go as well, at it as well yeah I, I'd think so yeah OK then we will have a look at your hashtags now and hashtag Ask Danny. Uh, we'll look at some international fans soon, but first up we have Austin, who's been in touch. Not Austin, trusty, is it? Uh, watching from Baltimore, Maryland, USA. Thoughts on the lineup from today's game? A lot of midfielders, he thought. Well, we've got no strikers. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously Joe Gelhart is the the only real striker really in, in the in the squad, isn't he? And he was on the bench, so yeah, you're looking around it, and he says there are a lot of midfielders, but you've got to categorise that in a way. Really, you've got obviously defensive midfielders, or yeah. um, you know, ball carriers, or yeah, tens. Like yeah. tens, yeah. So yeah. you've got sort of different compartments and and components to a midfield, really. And then obviously you've got Jack and Patrick. It depends which 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 category he's putting these players in. But we've got a lot of technical players who carry the ball really well, and we've seen that at times today. Um, and at times, yeah, I can see what he's getting at. I think he's he's on about where we didn't really have that focal point in the middle of the box. There was one point in the first half, wasn't there? Yeah. We were working the ball down this right hand side, 
And then we looked up, there's four Birmingham players looking around at each other like that. There's no one to mark because obviously Alex Pitchard's dropped out to go and link the play up. Um, Ahmad's floating around as he does. But then you're looking for that. If that ball is to get fizzed in, who's going to be getting on the end of it? So I can see what he's he's saying there, really. Um, but we are where we are. We've you know, we've played 42 games this season. I'm not sure it's a good stat for somebody to look at. But if you look at how many games we haven't had a natural striker out on the pitch, you know, you include, you know, you've got Ross Stewart. Um, well, Ahmad's actually gone ahead of Ross Stewart in yeah, the top in terms goal of the goals as well. He's 12th. Yeah, and then you've got Joe Geldhart who's there, and we've we talked about Joe. You know, you come on today, and it's a difficult one for him because he's come up there. We've had a man sent off, and he we, works we, his we shift. Four yeah, four one at that four, point. Four four one, and he's, he's isolated. The distance between the midfield and himself is massive, but he's putting pressure on. He's jumping into centre halves, and he worked the shift really well, and he almost created a good goal, didn't he, for, for Patrick on that yep. little one too as well. So played his part coming off the bench. But yeah, I think massive credit to the boys. I think before today we're still the fourth top scorers in the league yeah. and we've probably played a third of the season without a, an out-and-out striker. striker as well. Yeah. OK, and then let's move on to the next one. Quite a few to get through this afternoon. It's uh, it's uh, from Jerry. He says he's from Houston, Texas. Hello, Jerry. Thanks for tuning in. Djokovic puts his hands on the ref and doesn't get sent off. I didn't see, I didn't catch that, did you? No, I didn't see that. No, we'll have to see that one back. We'll yeah, I think back he, for that. he could have had a booking, couldn't he, in the first half? Early on, I think it was 14 minutes on the clock where... Uh, Dan Neal's just looking down this right-hand side to play a ball and he's just pulled him back and we've seen a similar booking for yeah. Colin late on, didn't we, in the we second did, yeah. half. Sometimes it's just the time on the clock where the ref thinks, I can let Too that early one, in the game for a I yellow can, or yeah, for something. I yeah. can let that one slide yeah. and, you know, he's a striker, he's, he's tracking back and all that. But, um, but no, I didn't see that. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, he's caught it on the, on the screen, maybe, maybe yeah. looking at something else while the action's going on. But, yeah... Uh, well, I think there was a game the other night, wasn't there, where somebody put uh, was Andy Robertson put his arms on the officials, didn't he? And the linesman gave him a little, well, yeah. give him a little sly elbow. So you've got to be careful with the referees. You have to be very careful these days. OK, then move on to the next one then, please. Billy, watching from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Can Danny explain the step up in quality in the football? Sunderland player from League One to the Championship, because when I look at last season, seeing clips of last season, we now play at a much higher level with relatively the same players. What's the difference then? Yeah, Is it because those quality players that are allowed an extra second on the ball? Um, whereas in League One, there'd be maybe a, a more physical player breathing down the neck quite possibly, a lot. Yeah, maybe a little difference in quality as more teams at this level perhaps want to get it down a little bit more and try and play a little bit, what some people say, the right way yeah. um, in terms of not as direct. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you look at the quality of player we've got and what suits the way we play. Uh, especially having a pitch like we've got here, is to get the ball down and try and play, try and play at a tempo. And I said it today, where at times that went away from us and you know we're moving it around the, uh, at the back. It's slow, it's pedestrian. I said it's like a testimonial for, yeah. for 10 or 15 minutes. But you've got to get that ball speed in and try and catch the opposition out by shifting it quicker. Yeah. And you get those little bit of pockets. They switch off or you know it's a little bit of a warmer day today out there and they think, oh, I've got to run another 10 yards sideways. And if they don't want to do it, they switch off. That's when you give them those little passing lanes to just slip those balls through. And that's when we're at our best. I mean, you look at the whole game. I know it finished 4-4, but how many times going forward, you're on the edge of your seat. You've got Patrick, you've got Jack. Ahmad, Jack, um, you know, Pritchard out there. And these players are going to cause any defence's problems at this level. Now, he's asking, obviously, the difference in the quality. And you look where we were last year and we crept in the back door, didn't we, through the playoffs to get to this level. But we've been in and amongst the playoffs pretty much all season this year. So we're probably, I say, punching above our weight and where the fans expected us to be. Um, you know, I've said it and a lot of fans would have thought it. Anywhere 18th and above would have been a good season, really, and you build. But we've been right amongst it this season and, you know, seeing performances. You look at the goals. You, we talk about the goals we've scored. We've got our own goal of the season competition at the club, let alone for the league, haven't yeah. we? Um, so we see what we're all about. And it's a joy to watch. And a lot of young lads coming into this level for the first time in their careers um, and then obviously we brought Ahmad in who wasn't with us last season in, in League One was he yep. and he's, nope. he's obviously you know a quality player What United paid 30 odd million yeah. for him is that right Yeah. Um, so when he's at it and when he's on his game he's a handful in his own right ok then let's have a look at what will be the final hashtag as Danny then we're going to do some shout outs after this on International Fans Day so stay with us here on SAFC Live uh, this one says, hello from Singapore. Hume scored against Dundee during pre-season. Well, we we uh, since found that out, thanks to Nazim. Uh, it also says, with a header, but I guess you meant with his first competitive goal. We did mean that. Yeah, well, no, to be fair, I always look at where we're at and I put little numbers by the players on it for what they've scored. And I'm, 
I've said that's Trey's goal and you've looked at me as if you thought he scored yeah. before. Now you're going to try and tell me now that you remembered he scored against I couldn't Dundee remember pieces. that. I can no. remember it now. It was a 1-0 yeah. win, wasn't it, yeah. I think? Um, but yeah, no, obviously... As, as it was 2-0. They scored a massive own goal, remember? Oh, they, that's right, yeah. They played from it back, almost yeah. from the halfway Charlie line. Mulgrew back played it back Charlie Mulgrew, keeper, yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I can't remember Trey's goal off the top of my head, but uh, I certainly remember that's his first one. But it was a strange one because... He was quite low key in his celebration, you know. You think first goal at the stadium. And the players right, didn't necessarily run to Trey, did they? They no. ran to Roberts, who put yeah, the cross I in. I think. think maybe because it's just that the situation in the game really. It's on half time. We just got ourselves back into it. We, yeah. we weren't quite Still at it in the first do. half, yeah. and you know, it's sort of get the ball back and let's get ready to go again. Uh, but no, fantastic for Trey, and he's you know I think he's been excellent as the season's gone on. He's grown into that role, right back, centre back, as he's been playing today. Uh, but he's been a big plus point. Right, I just want to run through some of the, the shout-outs. Uh, we've, we asked for this during the game. We wanted to know where you're watching today on International Fans Day. So if we can just run through some of the, the places where people have been watching. We've got someone watching Colin in Malta. We've got Martin, who is watching on holiday in Lanzarote. Eh? Well, in Mar <laughs> Martin, you might have seen Martin Danny there last week. <laughs> uh, moving on. Who else have we got? We've got Stephen, who's watching in from Taiwan. Brilliant to see. Who else have we got? David. Greetings from Trondheim. From Norway, Trondheim. And uh, Miguel, who's in Portugal. Fantastic. Court, who's in Connecticut. Thanks for watching. Let's get that playoff spot. Nathan watching from Brisbane. Down under, just across the road from the Gabba. Excellent stuff. Adam and Sarah watching from Woodlands, Texas. Hey, guys. I'm watching from Northern Italy. My English home is Hastings Hill fantastic <laughs> from Stephen uh, Ontario Canada from John this is brilliant on International Fans Day and we've also got one in from India fingers crossed for the last eight minutes that was from Abby this one's from Jude lifelong Sunderland fan watching from Bangkok Thailand which is my home for the next two years it's nice to have a bit of the northeast 6,000 miles away hashtag ask Danny Kelly watching from the Netherlands as well Last couple. Who's this? This is watch, Faithful watching in Pawtucket, Rhode Island in the US with Derek. Just, uh, just when we can't be there in person like last time. And Chase has been in touch watching from Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. Fantastic to see that. Thank you so much for joining us around the world on International Fans Day. We know every single fixture for Sunland could technically be International Fans Day, Danny, because we have such great support around the world and we wouldn't be the football club we are without you watching and supporting wherever you are this afternoon. Back in action on Tuesday, Danny, against Huddersfield Town here at the Stadium of Light. Yep. Let's hope Sunderland can continue their charge towards the playoffs. Who knows? It might happen. See you soon.